I want to introduce you to Tim Granger and his daughter Prudence, who are here. Tim, it's a few years since we yes. last spoke. You were diagnosed with dementia, I think, when you were 51. You're now yes. 56. How are you doing? Uh, going, going, going well. Yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, sorry, I've got a little, little bit of pro um, problem with, with with speech. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, um, Sorry, what was, your, what was your... I wanted to know how you're doing, because I know you're, you're living yes. at home with your beautiful wife, your wonderful daughter, Prue. Prue. How do you feel about the prospect of one day going into an aged care facility? I'd be horrified if I... <laughs> if, it was, if it was me. Yeah. Uh, at, at, if, the, if, you know, if, that, if, if, if that's the thing we're, we're looking for, we, we need to do a lot more than that, don't we? And I think what makes it scary too is that he's he's so much younger. He's going to be potentially going in in his in his sixties or sooner, um, which we really want to avoid. But if that occurs, how can he live his best life in these facilities that aren't really set up for him at his age? And it's it's an issue. There's more 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 people getting diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. I know from talking to you and your wife previously that it has been a conversation, and I'm sure it continues to be one for you guys. Mm. What do you say to your wife and daughter when this comes up, when you have to talk it through? When, it, when the time comes to, to do, go into a... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's going to be difficult. Mm. Well, it's going to be du double... It'll be dip, double dipping um, and, and probably... And it's going to be about... Uh, hard for them as well. Mm. Very, very hard. Mm. Prue, right. how do you feel about the prospect of, of that ever happening? Uh, I'm scared, yeah, because I think it's not something that you think is going to happen so soon. Um, we would like to be able to support him for as long as we can, but the reality is we probably can't. Um, I, we also have financial concerns um, because we'd like to be able to put him in a facility that will support him um, and his needs, but I don't know if we could afford that or if we would get in. Um, and yeah, and just witnessing that, witnessing, especially tonight, listening to everything that everybody's saying and bringing up, it's, it's scary. It's really scary. Um, yeah. I'm so sorry to hear that that's a choice you've got to make as a family. Um, Trevor, I'm sorry, Trevor is also here with us tonight. Trevor, how old were you when you were diagnosed with a form of dementia? Um, uh, 30, uh, 30. I think you were 62? 62. Yeah. Um, and I know since that diagnosis, you've taken up sailing and yoga and golf. Well, how was golf this afternoon? Wet. <laughs> <laughs> But I did you know, scrub up. <laughs> you scrub up brilliantly, Trevor. Um, how do you feel about the prospect of ever going into an aged care facility? I'd avoid it like the plague, for starters. And after that, I'd continue to uh, find an alternative. But why avoid it like the plague? What's, what, what are you so scared of? And you know the expression, um, knows as much as a brain surgeon. I think, um, no, I haven't got that right. That's all right. It's that's Dad's joke. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to ask the, the, the panel tonight? Well, the um, COVID-19 crisis has resulted in some pretty speedy action from governments worldwide like nothing most people have ever experienced. Will we see the same level of responsiveness and speedy action to adopt the recommendations from the final report of the Royal Commission? <laughs> Does the immediate... Oh, Just hold on, Joseph. There's a, there's a, there's a final bit <laughs> to Trevor's question and we'll, we'll let him get that out. Thank you. 
Um, does the future hold any hope for me and my dementia mates, all 472,000 of them? 472,000. You think COVID's big? Mm. And more coming. Joseph. I, I... I was thinking there was a Melbourne-Sydney bias having been frozen out of the conversation, <laughs> but um, the short answer is, will there be the speed of action that we saw with COVID? No, there absolutely won't be. There's no track record um, demonstrating government's willingness to do that. There's no demonstrated action from the opposition to hold them to account. Um, there was a Senate inquiry in 2005 about the plight of young people in nursing homes. That was over 15 years ago. A promise was made that young people, those under 65, wouldn't be in nursing homes and it remains a problem 15 years later and was one of the recommendations addressed um, in the neglect or the interim report of the Royal Commission. It still hasn't been fully dealt with. That remains a, a massive problem. There is and it is possible to maintain people with dementia at home for much longer than is currently happening. And if you see the practices that occur for young men with acquired brain injury who have extensive support services to themselves and their families, that's able to be maintained. There's discrimination that occurs when you get old and the minute you hit 65, you no longer are eligible for disability services. I'd be encouraging everyone who has dementia to be applying through to NDIS and lobbying for that to be accepted as a disability because your life would be substantially different with that versus going into the aged care system. Jo Joseph, I just want to ask, uh, Trevor and Tim, are they, are they right to be as afraid as they are? Yes. W well, well, a short answer is, is yes because it is. the way that aged care is currently structured and... You know, the, the panel's given examples where their loved ones have, have been well looked after, and I presume that's because they're from a high-income professional background with a reputation who know who to ask, where to go, and people pay attention when they arrive. For the average patient that I see, the person in low socioeconomic group that has no money that's a pensioner, they're terrified. They can't stand up for themselves. They do not get listened to. They do not know where to go and they're scared to prosecute uh, a complaint. And the most important thing about your life as you get older is having some semblance of control, mm. some choice where you can exercise what it is that you want to do with your day. And that is lost in the task-based focus in residential aged mm. care. The care workers don't like the task-based focus, but if they spend time to make a person feel better or feel human, that doesn't get logged as a billable minute or hour. They don't get rewarded for making a person feel better. They get rewarded for completing a task which is showering this number of people in this set time. 